Hello and welcome back to Diabetes Diet Guy. I'm Mark, a diabetes specialist dietitian, and today we're continuing with our medication series looking at sodium glucose co-transporters 2 inhibitors, otherwise known as SGLT2 inhibitors. As with all our videos and blogs on this topic, this is not to be used as recommendations to take or not take your medications. It is purely information about how they work so then you can apply it to the context of your own diabetes. What are SGLT2 inhibitors? To understand what SGLT2 inhibitors do, we need to understand what's actually happening in the body for their mechanism to take its action. In your kidneys, you have SGLT2 receptors, and these receptors' job is to reabsorb glucose through the kidney rather than passing it out as urine. Normally, this causes absolutely no problem, but with diabetes, glucose levels can be running high, and thus too much glucose is reabsorbed, or the glucose that is reabsorbed is then added on to an already high glucose level in the blood. The way SGLT2 inhibitors work then is they inhibit the SGLT2 receptor, and thus not as much glucose is reabsorbed into the body and instead it is urinated out. SGLT2 inhibitors are mostly used in type 2 diabetes, although they can be used in type 1 also. This class of medication is usually called the gliflozins. So examples include dapagliflozin, empagliflozin, canagliflozin, and ertugliflozin. Benefits of using SGLT2 inhibitors. SGLT2 inhibitors are quite effective at lowering glucose levels in the body. You can expect a drop in your HbA1c anywhere between 0.5 and 1% in the old money, which equates to around 6.5 to 11 millimoles per mole in the new reference ranges. One unexpected finding with SGLT2 inhibitor therapy was the cardiovascular benefits. In fact, SGLT2 inhibitors are becoming more commonplace in actually treating cardiovascular disease, with diabetes almost becoming a secondary consideration in some patients. The reason they're so effective with cardiovascular issues is currently unclear. However, one reason might be that SGLT2s make you urinate and thus actually lower the amount of water and thus blood circulating in your body and therefore you reduce your blood pressure because the heart and cardiovascular system has less water to pump around your body, which places less stress on those organs. Another terrific benefit of SGLT2 inhibitors is weight loss. Considering these are mainly used in type 2 diabetes, where around 80 to 90% of sufferers are overweight or obese, weight loss is a key consideration when choosing medications. The reason they are so effective at helping people lose weight is because all that glucose that was previously reabsorbed that is now being urinated out also contains calories. So you're not absorbing as many calories as you previously would have, and therefore it has a weight loss inducing effect. Finally, one other key benefit that we're starting to notice of SGLT2 inhibitors is that they have a beneficial effect on the progression of renal disease. Therefore, we can see that this medication class is quite a robust option when it comes to type 2 diabetes. Negatives and side effects. The most common side effect or downside to taking SGLT2 therapy is the increased incidence of thrush and urinary tract infections. This is because bacteria like sugar, and keep in mind glucose is sugar. So as more glucose passes through your urinary tract system, bacteria will start to accumulate and can cause some of these bacterial infections. Also, because you're urinating more, the risk of dehydration is increased with this class of medication. Therefore, making sure you drink lots of fluids and regularly is important. SGLT2 inhibitors can also increase the risk of going into diabetic ketoacidosis. This is mainly due to the dehydrating effect of the medications, and therefore if you're ever feeling sick or unwell and you're particularly off your food and drink, it's recommended that you stop taking the medication until you're back on your feet. When not to use SGLT2 inhibitors. Caution will be practiced by the medical team if you suffer with any kidney or renal problems. Also, if you suffer any vascular disease like foot disease, then SGLT2 inhibitors will likely be stopped if you were already taking them. Of course, if you're underweight, then this may not be the medication for you because it does have that weight loss inducing effect. And finally, as mentioned, particularly at the time of filming as we are in the COVID-19 pandemic, if you're feeling unwell, sick, off your food, then you should suspend the medication for a time period until you're back on your feet and feeling much better. 
And that is it everyone, so that is SGLT2 inhibitors. So hopefully you have a better idea of how they work now and place that into the context of your diabetes control. If you need more information about managing diabetes or living healthily, visit the blog at diabetesdietguide.com. There is a bunch of free information for users to uh, scroll through and have a look at and hopefully we can find something that will help you. If you do need a further helping hand, we offer consultancy services on a one-to-one -one basis and also programs which show you step-by-step -step how to manage your diabetes, lose weight, and live healthier lives for the long term. So for now, we'll leave it there and we'll see you at the next video.